Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and if you see a crime happen at the Apple Store, does that make you an eyewitness? Anyway, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam called Real Estate Simulator, developed by Geekon and published by Midnight Games, released not in early access and selling for $13. So, as I'm sure you can guess, this is a game where you simulate playing as a real estate agent. Okay, I suppose that's not too crazy of an idea. It's not like Grocery Store Simulator. This one is actually a bit better because I can definitely see both the appeal and the idea of this being good. I mean, look at House Flipper, for instance. So, is it good? Well, let's dive in together and find out for ourselves, shall we? So up first, as always, is the positives, followed by the negatives, followed by my final thoughts. Up first for the positives is the price tag. When you consider some things that I've yet to reveal to you in this game, I think that the price tag is very That's appropriate. The only thing that would have been more appropriate would be $10 for this game. It doesn't have much, but what it does have is good enough to justify that price tag, so it's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Next up on the positives is the gameplay. So, the gist of the game's gameplay is pretty simple. You start out with a certain amount of money, you go and buy some cheap property, spruce it up a bit with a sleeping bag, and then you sell it for twice as much as you bought it for. There's a lame version of haggling in this game, and it almost feels like House Flipper as you get more and more money and can buy bigger and bigger houses. But it's kind of like the poor man's House Flipper. Less gameplay components, less stuff to buy, less interesting home designs to look at, and I could keep going. But, on the flip side, it's more simple and easier to understand and play than House Flipper. I remember playing that game thinking to myself, I don't understand, they said they wanted a, a kid's room and I filled it with kid stuff and they still don't think it's a kid's room, why? None of that here in this game, just a simple beautification meter and once you reach it, the house is apparently awesome and people will pay out the ass for it. Nice and simple. But overall, the repetitive nature of the gameplay mechanic is actually really addictive and interesting. Ever play Streamer Life Simulator? Well, that game was kind of low quality too, but also very addictive. This game has the gameplay component down to make you want to keep playing, despite its overall low quality. I mean, I couldn't stop myself from playing it until a real life event forced me to. I just wanted to keep going, so I'm not entirely sure what, but it's doing something right in its gameplay. Just to make sure I, don't, I didn't miss anything, you buy a house, cheap and empty, then you fill it with niceness and sell it for twice the amount. Upgrade offices when you have enough money and start selling property in richer and richer areas until you create this large real estate tycoon. Got it? That's the gist of the game. Okay, good. Now then, the last positive is the stability. The game played super smooth, it was very stable, no frame rate dropping, no glitching, no freezing or crashing, at least for me. I was able to play non-stop with no issues the entire time, so that's always a nice little thing to see in games nowadays. Now, I did see other people on the Steam store page complaining about how their game was buggy and glitchy and whatnot. For me, personally, it wasn't, so I don't know, but keep in mind, it could be glitchy for you, even though it wasn't for me. Now, that's, that's all I got, unfortunately, for the positives. Up next will be the negatives, but before we get into those, please consider helping the growth of my channel. I need help from my community, so please share my content and my channel online, like, comment, and subscribe. It might not feel like much, but it really does help smaller channels like mine a lot more than you might think, so, you know, consider helping me out today, especially if you found this video informative or entertaining. Thank you. Now then, on to the negatives. Up first is the graphics. It's not exactly very pretty to look at. Yes, the movements of the models and the characters, the lighting and the fluid actions of things happening in front of you, they aren't very fluid. Basically, it's low quality and it shows. I don't really know what else to say, but you can pretty exactly much see for yourself in this video. For. Like, it's not awful. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be awesome, but still, I had to point it out. I've seen games where the models look crappy, but the lighting is amazing, and the attention to detail is amazing, and the color contrasts are amazing, so really no excuse for a lot of the bad quality visuals I'm getting here. Next up is the tutorial. It's practically non-existent. It barely teaches you anything you need to know, and after an hour and you get past the beginner stuff, you're pretty much guessing on your own to figure out how this works, or how that works, or when do you do this, or what does that do. So that's a little annoying, that's a little frustrating. I know the tutorials can be hit or miss for some people. For me, it's a requirement, so it's a personal opinion that I'm a little upset that the tutorial was kind of bare bones and basic and unhelpful. Next on the negatives is the length of play. After an hour, I got past the slums, or the first segment of housing in the game. I'm already in the suburbs, which is the second section of housing in the game, and I'm already making bucket loads of money there, and I'll be moving on to the city, which is the third one next, and there's only three. Uh, I think in four hours, you could do everything you wanted to do in this game, and that's highly disappointing. Technically, by my original standards, its length meets its requirement in terms of price tag, but for such a simple and addictive game, I expected it to be longer, to have more. I mean, it's you normally with these low-quality games like this, they, they make up for its low quality with content. The game doesn't really do that here, or they make up for it in length. The game doesn't really do that here either. 
After that, I suppose the next negative would be the scope and scale of the game. Might as well just lean right into that one based on what I was just saying. Overall, it's pretty empty and not a whole lot here. It's literally just buy a house, place a sleeping bag or a bed or whatever, sell house over and over again until you get to the suburbs. Like, because it's in the in the slums, it's like sleeping bags and storage containers and an old abandoned bus. And the only thing you can put in them is a sleeping bag. So you just buy the, the tents for cheap, like $1,000, place a sleeping bag, sell it for $2,000 until you get enough money to spend $5,000 on the shipping container, put a sleeping bag in it, sell it for $10,000 until you get enough money to buy the bus, which is $10,000, and then you put a sleeping bag in it, and then you sell it for $20,000, and you just do that until you have enough money to buy a $40,000 house in the suburbs. So you just do that over and over again until you move on to the next segment. It's very limited. Despite its gameplay being addictive, there's nothing else there besides the basics of real estate. You can't even do anything in your office. Upgrading your office will give you minor buffs, but I could do just as well buying and selling houses if I never moved offices, so why even bother upgrading? And obviously that's not all. Each quote-unquote map that you can look around and buy houses and sell houses are very small. I expected to move around and buy a bunch of stuff, but you can't. You can move down this street and that street. All others are blocked off. All those houses and properties in the distance, you can't touch them. Only these ones. So the game is just incredibly small and limited with very little to do and very little to buy everywhere and just very little all around in this game, which once you get into it shows just how small and little is actually there, like how much is lacking. Like you can't even buy stuff in the house for the house. Like in House Flipper, you can pull up your little iPad, you can buy what you need, and then you have it right there for you, and you can just do it in the house. You don't got to go all the way back to the office. In this game, no. You got to buy everything in the office, then you got to go to the house. And if you don't have everything you need, guess what? You got to go all the way back to the office, buy what you need, and come all the way back. It's very unintuitive and, and, and poorly designed, in my opinion. So, that's all I got for the negatives, and you might be wondering why I didn't mention sound quality. Well, that's because it's kind of in the middle. The music is generic and forgettable, but not bad or overbearing or, you know, annoying. There's partial voice acting spruced about here and there, but it's average. Hell, it might even be AI generated, I just don't know anymore. And the other sound effects are just standard, so here it is. About average all around. Not good, not bad. So, that's all I got to say about the game's pros and cons. My overall thoughts? Well, I mean... I mean, I bought this game for a discount at $10. I played it for an hour, and I could probably play for another couple of hours before I'm done with it forever. Is it worth $10? Sure. But just know what you're getting into. Is it worth $13? Again, sure. But, you know, you get what you pay for. Like, it's a small, low-budget, low-quality game that'll entertain you for a day, maybe. Maybe half a day. It was so empty and so lacking, I legitimately thought it was early access while playing and was hoping it would introduce more functions, items, houses, and whatnot in the future. Maybe it will with DLC that you'll have to pay for, but currently it's pretty bare with minimal effort. In my opinion, if you've got nothing else to do and you are desperate for a game to just help you whittle away the day, then this isn't awful and it's cheap. You could play it and entertain yourself for a few hours at least. But if you are looking for the next house flipper, power wash simulator, or gas station simulator, then I suggest you look elsewhere. Do I recommend this game? Not really. I mean, just go get House Flipper. It's this It's this game. It's basically this game, except it's far superior to this game in literally every way. This is just the cheaper alternative. I mean, hell, the first House Flipper is currently selling for $13 right now. So yeah, ignore this one and go buy that one if the idea of this interests you in the, in the slightest. It's literally the exact same thing, except a far better experience. In House Flipper, there's more gameplay components, there's more intuitive design, and you're basically doing the same thing. In this game, you buy a house, and then you fix it up, and then you sell it. That's what House Flipper does. It's literally the same thing, but they gave it a different name with less quality. So just go get House Flipper for $13 instead of this game for $13. All right, everyone? All right, so that's all the time I got for this video. Thanks so much for watching this with a special thanks to those of you who stuck around till the end. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.